Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the Ghoul RC T32 quadcopter. This is the T32 right here. Uh, it showed up in the mail the other day, and I've had a chance to, uh, to fly it around a little bit, get more familiar with it, and I just want to do a quick overview of this. Uh, we're not going to do the unboxing in this because they're all pretty much the same as far as what they come with. Um, I can say that this one does come with blade guards, but I've taken those off. Um, of course, uh, it's got your propellers. It's two full sets of the propellers, uh, some landing gear, and of course, uh, a battery, a screwdriver. Uh, you actually get a little uh, velvet-style uh, carrying case. But what I do like about this quadcopter um, is that it actually folds up uh, very similarly to uh, the, the DJI, DJI Mavic Pro. So when you're not using it, you can fold it up like this. Uh, you can take off um, the landing gear, that sort of thing, it just pops right out there. And you can store everything in the bag and not have to worry about losing anything or things getting scattered, things like that. Um, but overall, pretty pretty great. I love that it folds up and that it can be very, very small like that. But of course, we want to fly it, so we're going to open it up. Um, on the bottom, um, there are, well, on the bottom, on the front end, there are some places that you can see where it clicks into place. Uh, same thing on the back, except that it's on the top here, and you can actually feel it pop into place when everything's ready to go. So of course, the first thing we want to do here is put the battery in. So battery compartment is here on the back. All we've got to do is pull the lead out of here, plug that in, and just tuck that back inside and close it up. Then on the top, power button's right here. Yep, and you should be able to see that it's flashing blue on the front end and red on the back end there. So when that's flashing, we know that it's ready to go. Okay, so you'll want to make sure that this is level. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Okay, we've got that, I'll turn this on. And you can see, maybe you can see, uh, the, the lights have just stopped flashing altogether. They are a solid red and blue there, so we know that um, it's ready to go. Um, and then when we're ready to fly it, we can just press this button right here. And just like that, uh, the blade starts spinning, letting you know it's ready, and we can turn that off. So the flying aspect of that is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, what I wanted to show here is uh, this. I'm going to come into here, and I'm going to open up an app for this quadcopter called T32. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into um, my drop down here. Oops, I just want to turn that on. And turn that on. Okay, now we're connected to the Ghoul RC uh, 79F37D. Um, and now that we're actually connected to that, let's go back one. Let's see, click connect. All right, there we go. Now, uh, right, right down there, you can see you can see my legs right there. So we're going to go ahead and switch camera angles, and I'll see if I can get some footage of uh, from from the camera on the quadcopter. And the, the camera on the on the T32 is a 720p. So we'll go ahead and see if we can't get some footage from that. Okay, so I've been flying this for a few minutes, and there's a few things that I can say. A lot of the quads that I have flown over the last year or so, um, once it's connected and ready to go, you know, usually you can uh, just press up and it starts, and you can press down and it stops. With this, um, that's not the case, obviously, here. Um, there's actually a uh, propeller start. And this is where things get frustrating for me, because Again, what, what used to work was just pressing the, the uh, stick up to make the blade start, holding it down. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and it, like, it only works um, to shut them off. Sometimes it never works to start them this way. So in order to make it start, you have to press that button. Um, down here, there's also the option to um, to just do a manual takeoff, or an automatic takeoff rather. Um, we can just press this button. 
Um, and if you want to make it uh, stop flying, you can use that same button to make it just stop. Um, I, I prefer being able to start and stop with this, um, but maybe that's just personal preference. And of course, you've got all of your, your different trims and, and features and functions on all these different buttons. Uh, like I said, it does come with an app. Uh, you can take photos, you can take videos. Um, you can actually, uh, with this button over here, uh, nope, sorry, this one, uh, you can, in theory, um, not have to use the controller. Um, and you can actually just use uh, this, which I, I can say I have not had good luck with using uh, just the app. Um, it doesn't give you the tactile feedback that I like when I'm controlling one of these. Um, so you can use the app. I just don't prefer it that way. Okay, so one other quick thing. Um, you may have noticed that the flight, uh, the, the footage from the flight was a bit erratic and unstable. And it's really disappointing that I have to, to that I even have to say this. You see how these, these, tr these, these leaves here are moving? Um, like it's just barely, like if you, maybe if we can come down like on this rose bush over here. Just things are barely moving and that's enough to make this thing hard to fly. And that's really, really disappointing in my opinion. So let's go over some of the stuff about the T32. I, I like the aesthetic of it. I like the idea that you can uh, fold these or fold it up to, uh, to take it places. Uh, I, think, I think they did uh, a good job of emulating that from the Mavic Pro. Uh, I, I like that it's got the 720p camera on it. Um, obviously, it's not 4K, but um, but it does a decent job. Um, I'm not I'm not super upset about that. Um, it, it does only come with one battery. Uh, you may want to consider buying more uh, of the uh, was it the 3.7 volt? Yeah, the 3.7 volt uh, just hobby batteries. Um, I've got several of these from doing lots of different uh, quadcopter reviews. Um, and they all seem to work interchangeably, so you want to pick up a few more of those. Probably a charger or two. Um, it, it seems to be rugged and durable. I've, I've crashed it more times than I care to admit, and, and it seems to hold up pretty well there. Um, I like that it comes with a carrying bag. Um, I, think, I think it was a nice thought. I think they could have done more with it, um, but it was a nice thought. The problem that I have with it is that I don't like the takeoff and landing uh, features that it's got. We have to use the button rather than just the uh, the, the sticks. Uh, I like to use the sticks. That's how I've always done it. Maybe maybe I'm just used to flying a different style, um, but I, I'm not a big fan of the buttons to to take off and land. These, these are fairly cheap overall, um, and and as a result of that, you're gonna you're gonna have some trade-offs. Um, you'll get about 100 meters of range with this, you know, as opposed to the a half mile or a mile that you might get with some of the, the more high end. Um, but again, that's a bit of a trade-off uh, just for the lower cost. Just the slightest breeze, even, even with these uh, medium-sized quads, uh, still make them nearly impossible to fly outside, and that's really disappointing. Um, you know, I live in Colorado, and um, it's fairly breezy here most of the time. Uh, earlier this summer, I was in Idaho, where the air is very stagnant. And I was even able to take out some of my small indoor quads and fly them outside with no issues at all. So, uh, so it's definitely something you want to keep in mind when um, when you're buying this. Is, is consider uh, consider your your location and how much wind you're going to have to deal with. Because if it's if it's if it's very much at all, this may not be the right option for you. With regards to with that, it, this is more of an indoor flyer. Uh, than an outdoor flyer, and that that's kind of disappointing. But if you are still interested in this, um, I will have a non-affiliate link down in the description below. Uh, you can go over and pick one of those up. Um, I will also say that um, Google RC has a lot of different apps for all of their different uh, quadcopters. Uh, you'll want to go to the Google Play Store if you've got an Android. I can't help if you're on um, Apple or iOS. I, I don't have any of those devices. So I don't know if it'll even work with that device. You will want to go to the uh, to the Play Store and just look for an app called T32. Uh, at, the, at the point of recording this, um, it's got a red icon uh, with a little camera. I'll probably put a link to that in the description as well. Um, again, there are things that I do like about it, but unfortunately for me, where I live, that sort of thing, this isn't really really a good fit uh, for me. 
Um, but again, I think they did a lot of things right. So it's definitely at least worth a look if you live in an area where, where there's not a lot of wind. So definitely something to keep in mind there. Again, affiliate links down in the description below. Also, if you found the video helpful, do me if you ever give the video a thumbs up. That would help me in the channel out quite a bit. If you're new here, don't forget to th hit the subscribe button. I've got lots of new content coming out very soon. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I always appreciate you guys watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.